My name is Clarence. So, you know, today I felt pretty confident that I could share one of my recipes with you. Um, you know, it's Thanksgiving almost, time where family gets together. You don't want to show up empty-handed. You don't want to show up with just like a bag of chips and salsa because you forgot you had to go to Safeway and pick it up on the way there. Today we're going to make bacon leek potato soup. For the soup, you're gonna need four potatoes, two orange carrots, two nice long stalks of yummy celery, half of a leek. Leeks come in different shapes and sizes, so be mindful. Two slices of bacon, perfectly clean your surface before putting them on the table. Half of a Chinese sausage, three cloves of garlic, one nice shallot, and one yummy seed full of chili pepper. And don't forget the cream, because you're gonna need it for that bao day later on. So what you want to do first is you want to prepare everything. You know, later down in the cooking process, it's hard to do cooking and then preparing. Cooking and then preparing. So what you want to do, so what you want to do is have everything chopped and nicely prepared ahead of time. That's what the French people taught me. The wash. Ugh, all my veggies are dirty. Clean vegetables. Clean, clean food. And clean food. It means your girlfriend won't leave you. I don't have a vegetable peeler because when I moved, um, I didn't think I needed one. And this is one of those times where I'm like, I wish I had one. You have to be, you have to do it without losing as much skin as possible. Clean it up as best you can, but you know, don't, don't sweat it if there's like a little bump. Like this thing right, actually this might be kind of a little big. Uh, one thing that's helpful is to have a, scrap bowl. Um, normally when you do this, you just peel it right into the trash can. But because I'm trying to organize my workflow, um, I just keep a little um, scrap bowl right there. So this is kind of where you can have a little creativity. Because the, the way I see vegetables when you cut them is, I want to see how they look on the final plate. When I put a spoon into my soup, right, do I want it to be big chunks? Or do I want to be small chunks? I think today I want it to be a little smaller because I think smaller pieces cook faster. Cut this in half. When you cut vegetables, you always want a flat base. And I'm just gonna run my knife through and kind of maybe quarter inch, half an inch wide chunks. Take these. Again, you want a flat base on the bottom. In the kitchen, you always want to uh, be efficient with your movements. What's the most you can do with the fewest amount of movements? Now they're all like little sticks, so I just run like that. Yeah, what we end up is little pieces that look like this. All right. We are done. Done with our potatoes. They have a lot of excess starch on them, which I don't want. You know, so I like to, what I like to do is just soak them in water. That'll draw out the starch, and when we drain them later, the potatoes will, um, yeah, not be so clumpy, I guess. What we're gonna do now is move on to the carrots and the celery. Um, I want to break it down so I can deal with it in sections. What I want to do with this is actually, I want to cut these to roughly the same size as my potatoes. Like before, we're just going to cut them into little cubes. You don't have to make it, you know, super uniform. You just want it roughly the same size. Because when, when food is the same size, it cooks at the same rate. And the last thing you want is half your carrots to be like too mushy and the other half to be like too crunchy. So you want, you want it to be nice and even. Maybe you guys know, maybe you guys don't, but what I'm doing is I'm making a it's, it's like um, the flavor base for a soup or a stew. Generally, it's onions, carrot, and celery. When you're cooking it in a stew, you let it kind of create the base for your soup. It just makes it taste really deep and nice.
this leak, one of the stars of the show. Right. Uh, so what I want to do with this is just I want like little, you know, nice little ribbons. I'm gonna put these leaks in their own separate container because those, these don't take as long to cook. With cooking, you gotta be aware of how long certain things cook. So root vegetables um, take longer to cook. So that's why they're going in first. But these leaks, like it's almost, they're almost just like fibery strands. So they don't really take too long to cook. So I'm gonna throw those in at the very end or towards the end. The main thing with soup is building flavor. To make a really good soup, you gotta... It's a combination of order, but also patience. So what I'm gonna do is throw some oil into the pot. Make sure you, you wanna get a... Because this is a soup, you want something that'll be large enough to hold everything. So what we're gonna do right now is we're I'm actually gonna leave it on medium heat, um, and we're gonna, we're gonna cook off the bacon. So, while we're letting that heat up, I'm gonna chop the Chinese sausage in small pieces. I learned about this um, technique of combining different kinds of smoked meats from a Gordon Ramsay video. He was making carbonara and he had like regular bacon, but he also had um, a different kind of stringy bacon that was more smoked, more spiced. So I tried it with this and I think it actually um, has a good flavor. Pro tip. So when, when you cut bacon, when you leave the bacon out for too long, um, it gets warm, but it gets harder to cut because the bacon fat makes it slippery. So what I do is I'll actually do a cream barbecue style where I'll just snip it right into the oil. Medium heat is an important step because with bacon, if you cook on a too high heat, the bacon will start to sear, and it'll start to smoke, and you'll burn it too quickly. Putting it on medium heat lets it kind of cook more slowly, so you get more flavor out over a gradual period of time. Sausage goes in too, because you want the, all the cured meats to just sizzle together at the same time. We're having a really creamy, potato-y, savory soup. What, what better to add than a chili pepper? Go inside chili pepper, and you listen to it. For all those seeds, right? If you cut it on the board, the seeds are gonna go everywhere. But I just like to snip it little by little, take all the seeds, and just break it down inside the pot. At the same time, we're gonna throw in our garlic. So we've cooked this for about five minutes so far. Flavors have been activated. So if you look at the garlic, it's kind of reached this golden brown color. And it's golden brown and it's getting close to burning, so we want to take it out while we still can. Man, if you can just smell this. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So now, what we want to do, we're going to do this thing called sweating. We're going to sweat these vegetables, get them to get their, cook them so their natural sugars come out and it's going to get all caramelly. And, mm -mm -mm. So, in. And because these are kind of harder root vegetables, we can up the heat. Oh, it's escaping. Sometimes they don't want to die, so they try to run away. We're going to season our vegetables. You want to season throughout your cooking, not just at the end. Salt and pepper are not adequate seasonings. You need to add more things to it. Garlic powder, onion powder, um, some oregano, and make it, again, I, I kind of want to add a little bit more spice. So we'll do some paprika and cayenne pepper. Going back to the way that my mom raised me, I don't really measure stuff around here. So, I mean, if you want to have measurements, maybe like half a tablespoon. I just kind of like do this. Yeah. I know some people, you know, they want to have recipes, and I get it, you know, you want to make the recipe, you know, you 
want to make the dish the way that it's um, the way that's advertised on the website or in the book. But I would encourage you, you know, if you like things spicier, add more cayenne pepper. If you want things more like garlic tasting, add more garlic salt. Um, really is no singular way to cook, I guess. Mm, look at that. What's happening is that all these vegetables are being sweated out, but they're also being flavored by that bacon fat. Ooh, that smells good too. You can smell it. Mm -hmm. What we're gonna do? One of these leeks. We're gonna sweat them off a little bit too. We want to get. We want these to have a little bit of flavor also. So let's go in. So I'm gonna get these leeks covered in that yummy oil. I feel like leeks are one of those vegetables that just like soak up flavor. Mushrooms are similar, like onions soak up flavor. I think it just has to be like these very somewhat fibery vegetables. Look at that color. Isn't that beautiful? It's only been like a couple seconds, but oh man, oh man, oh man. Final assembly. I'll do with the bacon. Scrape in any excess oil that might have run out while the bacon was sitting around. And now we're gonna add the final, the final star. You get a few things. You get chicken broth. And you can fill up some water. Chicken broth. Chicken broth is it's like I see it, it's 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 a pretty magical item. Like you just add it to anything. Like you could steam things with water and it'll break it down and make it softer. But that's basically this is what this does. And it adds chicken flavor. I added roughly about half a cup. I like to do chicken stock and water because if you did all chicken stock, it might get too chickeny. Um, so you want to balance it out. So chicken stock and I put about the same amount in, in, in water. So we're gonna simmer it for about 30, 35 minutes. Maybe less because I'm hungry. Um, so now it's, now it's up to temperature. We're gonna reduce heat, cover it up, and let it go. 20 minutes should do the trick. So it's been roughly 20 minutes or 10 minutes. I didn't really keep track. I was too busy tending to my roses. Um, but yeah, I think we're about done. Come close, come close, come close. This is what it looks like. Stewed, simmered to perfection. I have to do a little taste at this stage to see what it's like. I like to get, I like to get a potato because that's the thing that I'm, I'm still unsure, unsure if it's fully cooked. It's a little soft. Ooh. A little spicy, I like it. So how we're gonna melt out the spice is we're gonna have some heavy cream. Now heavy cream, I don't use too much of it. I just like to, it just helps thicken up the broth a little bit. Um, so, about a quarter cup. Then what I do, is I like to mix it in, not too much. When you mix it in, you get everything all milky looking. Cooking, as much as it is about taste, it's about the eyes, it's what they see on the plate. So what I like to do, take these green onions, not be too much, but that's okay. So, spring onions, the whiter stuff, the whiter parts are more onion flavoring. So what I like to do, is I'll throw those into the pot right now. Let them actually cook in the broth. So again, what we're doing, building flavor. So you've built that base, right? We built 
the bacon, garlic, chili base. Maybe add some vegetables, add some potato, let it stew together. And now as a final layer on top, we have that uh, kind of an onion-y onion bite that'll just kind of sit on top. And that'll even be more apparent when we add the green parts. Throw those in. Give it one last taste. Here's a little more salt. gonna add the final bits of green on top. Come close, come close. Look at that. Give it a little mix, because I like to have it running throughout the soup. Alright. Now we're gonna plate! Get all of that. See what's can both see what I'm talking about? Those little uniform chunks. I get when I a spoonful of that. Few more bits on top. And bacon, leek, potato, soup. This has been an episode of Cooking with Clarence. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you want to see more. I have a lot more recipes. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.